Hey guys, it's Elena. Today I have one final brush set for 2021 and it is my mixed media collage brush set. And I've been actually working on this one all year, but I finally got around to finishing it in the past couple weeks. So I'm really excited to introduce this to you. So this brush set is inspired by mixed media collage and art journaling styles where you will end up using a lot of different kinds of paint, different kinds of mediums, and including 3D type mediums like paper, cloth, and stitching. And I've created a lot of different kinds of brushes for mixing and matching with each other. And I've also created a ephemera stamp brush set, which is also included in this package. So I will be showing you a little demo of all of those today and showing you kind of the idea behind them and how they work. So once you have the files loaded in Procreate, there should be three color palettes, mixed media rainbow, mixed media pastels, and mixed media dark. And the dark one is mainly for use with paper textures and vintage themes. And this rainbow was sort of inspired by, you know, those colorized photos from the 60s that just have these amazing pastel colors in them. That is what this is inspired by. And then the pastels is just a neutral palette that I was really drawn to. So those are the, are the color palettes that come with the mixed media collage brush set. And there are also two brush folders that come with this. So there's the mixed media folder, and then there's the ephemera stamps folder, which I will get to in just a moment. But to explain first the mixed media folder, this includes a very wide variety of different kinds of media as suggested by the name. And I wanted to mention that I have a lot of brush sets that I have made previously, but all of these brushes are new. So to start out with, we've got our pencils. We've got a soft pencil and a hard pencil. And I'm just going to demo these with black. So the soft pencil, that means that more of the graphite is coming out onto your paper. So it's actually a darker, um, it's a darker pencil, this, the one that says soft. And so with a light touch, it comes out light like this. With a heavy touch, it comes out dark like this. And then we've got our hard pencil, which with the harder graphite, it's coming out much softer. So more of a gray look with the black. So that's why I wanted to show you what it looks like when you've selected black. It's always going to be a fairly light color that comes out with this. Okay, and we have two different kinds of fine liner pens and these are inspired by the Micron pens, which I really like. Um, and so we have a smooth fine liner. Go back to black here. And you know, it's just kind of a standard um, ink pen that is monoline. We've got a bit of a taper on it and it's it's fairly smooth but it has some streamline and stabilization on it as well so that you can have some some nice smooth lines. We've also got a toothy version which basically just means that I'll just make it bigger so you can see it's got some edges to it so if you were drawing on a paper that had a bit more of a texture to it with a fine liner that would be what it would look like. But the same principles apply as the one above. Then we also have an ink blot and a gloopy ink. These two are fairly similar, um, but the ink blot has more of a, um, an edge that sort of fades out. So with, with very little pressure, you have a tiny, tiny line, and then it can get really big when you just add a bit of pressure. So, the point of this is to have a really uneven amount as if you had like a quill pen that was just like spilling ink out all the time. And the gloopy ink is similar, but it has smoother lines. So also has very, very fine lines if you just barely touch the screen with your pencil. These two are fun for making some really uh, messy, messy lines. And then here I've used the fine liner. Okay, so back to our demo. Those are the ink brushes. Then we have the chalk 
And this can be used in any color on any background, but it might be best demoed on a black background with white. So this has a little bit of pressure sensitivity to it. So I'm pushing hard now. I'm not pushing hard. And it builds like real chalk wood. So it's, it's a bit of a thin line to begin with. And then as you keep adding more on top, it gets darker. And the next one up is a crayon brush. And this one also has some pressure sensitivity in both the size and the opacity. And you can get some interesting textures by layering it. And then we have two different versions of oil pastels. I just wanted to include two of these because I was having a lot of fun creating these brushes. So these are, the more pressure that you add, the, the darker that they get. They have kind of a, a greasy looking edge and they blend really well. The colors blend really well with each other. You get some interesting blends. So number one is a bit darker, and then number two, it is a bit more streaky. And after that, we have three paint brushes. So we have the, and none of these are in the painterly brush set. These are all created new. We have the dry gesso, which is a very, very messy brush that I tend to enjoy using it in kind of light colors and blending a lot with it um, and it has a very dark edge on it similar to some of my palette knife brushes from my painterly brush set but this is really like it kind of looks gloopy and it's supposed to look gloopy I wanted to have something really messy looking and actually I like to use it with a couple different colors and then I like to add white on top you can get a pure white by double tapping near the white on your color wheel because I think gesso is often used in white and it's often used in mixed media as as just sort of something that you can build texture with so that's why I wanted a really gloopy brush that looks good in white so that's what that is and then the messy acrylic is it has more of a flow to it so it's not exactly gesso but it is still quite messy fairly dry looking and you can build up some interesting textures with this as well. The harder that you push, the more color that you get and the less texture that comes out. And this one also looks good in white um, and it can make some interesting textures if you just build different colors and just kind of let it blend. So that is that. I'm just gonna make some space here. So then we have our dimensional acrylic and this one is, it's kind of like squeezing paint out of a tube and it's just kind of a fun one. You can make some interesting sort of 3D looking strokes with this. So that is the acrylic brushes. Then we have the splatter brushes. And again, I have splatter brushes in other brush sets, but these are new. So we have sparse splatter, and then we also have dense splatter. And I also really enjoy using these in white. If you have built up a lot of texture or if you have a background that is not white, it can look really interesting. So that is that. And then we also have the dotted lines and Um, you can change the size, you can use these to outline things, which is a really fun technique in mixed media. To just like, if you have made a stamp, for instance, from the stamp set that I'll show you in a moment, it can be fun to embellish that with dots around it. And we have two different versions of those. And again, these look good in white as well. Something that I enjoy doing with mixed media style pieces is using white as a highlight color because I think it it's something that is overlooked in digital art but is actually used quite a lot in traditional art. It can really add some some nice dimension 
to digital pieces. So the next one that we have is Tangle. And this one is just exactly what it sounds like. It's kind of a scribble brush. So moving on from the Tangle brush, we have our cloth brushes. There are four of these and we have cotton cloth, linen, denim, and burlap, and all of them say variable size on them. And what that means is that the size of the texture changes with the, the brush. So I'll show you that with a color. This is the, um, let's try the cotton cloth. So this is the cotton cloth that has kind of a frayed edge. And then if you change that, it's getting bigger. All of the cloth brushes change. So that was the cotton cloth. And then we've got the, the linen, has a frayed edge as well. Denim and burlap, which looks great in this color right here on the mixed media dark palette. That's my favorite burlap color right there. With the cloth brushes and also with the paper brushes below, um, it is important to note that they are not as solid as they look. Um, so if you overlap them on the same layer, they're going to look like this. They're not going to look like pieces of cloth sitting on top of each other. And this is because in Procreate, if you have a texture that is accomplished using transparency, so anything that is not completely solid is always going to have some transparency in it. However, I will come to it later, but I do actually have a brush included in this set and a quick method you can use to actually make it solid. So moving on from the cloth brushes, we have the stitch brushes. So we have our basic running stitch, and this one is meant to look like a standard sewing machine stitch, um, sort of inspired by colorful sneakers that have this white stitching on them. I really like using this one to line things, either a piece of paper or a piece of cloth. And it does go in the direction that you're going in. So if I go in this direction, the stitches are kind of looking like this. If I go in the other direction, they're going in the other direction. And they should all line up with your pen, but sometimes the odd one will go like that and sort of turn. So just do it again and it should be fine. And this one can be used in any color. It gets bigger when you make the brush bigger. So the back stitch is kind of how this would look on the other side. This one can be fun to just add some really kind of messy looking stitching. That's kind of what I've been wanted to go for with these, these brushes, these stitch brushes. It's not really meant to um, make something that looks like it was neatly sewn. It's more like mixed media stitching. So like if you put in a bunch of paper and then you stick that into your sewing machine and you sew it all together with all these crazy stitches, that's kind of what this is meant to look like. So we've also got the embroidery stitch, which is a bit more irregular and it has some pressure sensitivity in it. And then we've got the zigzag, which goes in the direction that you use it in. And we've got the messy multi stitch. This one is a bit of a fun one. It has a lot of different sizes in it, and it actually does have some color variation to it as well, which is based on the color that you have chosen. So if it's a really saturated color like this orange, you do get quite a, a lot of color variation that comes out here. And then if you have a more of a grayish color, you don't have quite as much variation. And this one is just meant to be like, if, if you are just doing some really, really messy stitching and just making something look like kind of patchy, that's what this one is for. And then lastly, in the stitches we have the satin stitch and this one is like an embroidery stitch like if you're going to make a leaf or a flower and it also looks good as like a border maybe in a darker color actually it's pressure sensitive 
So, so that's another fun one. And that is all of the stitch brushes. So I'm just going to clear that and then move on. So from this point forward, we have the notebook paper, we have a couple of special tools, and then we have a lot of paper textures that the tools are meant to be used on. So before I show these tools, I'm just going to show the paper brushes and then I will show how to use those tools on there. So we have a very standard notebook paper. I've written light on here because it comes out very light. It's always white no matter what color you've chosen and the color you've chosen comes out as the lines. So it, it will be white if the background is white, but if your background is another color, it's actually going to be the same color as that. So it's actually very transparent. And I will show you how to make it less transparent in a moment here. We're just going to get to that part. Um, so once we get past these tools, we also have the old notebook paper, and this is where this dark color palette comes in because a lot of these colors look good as paper. And the notebook paper has a variable size. Both kinds of notebook paper has a variable size. We've also got some craft paper, and this is the, the brown paper that, that you would imagine like brown paper packages tied up with string. It's a little bit like that. And we've also got handmade paper, and these all have a torn edge. So it comes out looking like it's just been ripped. We also have a torn edge eraser that I'll show you in a moment. This is another light one, which um, comes out mostly transparent, reflecting the background color. And the same goes for handmade paper number two, which has some nice flowers in it. And then we have more handmade paper with torn edges. And this one has a decal edge. So you, most of the papers have either a decal edge or a torn edge. And so what I mean by decal edge is that it's just kind of looks like old, almost a little bit burned on the edges, like it's just really aged. And then the torn has got, literally looks like it's just been ripped. And that's actually what it's been sourced from. We have our crumpled paper. And we also have some cardboard. And these ones, all the ones that um, do not say variable size, that means that if I make this small or if I make it large, it's going to be the texture itself doesn't change. That's just the way that these are built because um, I wanted to be able to have the pressure control the size and I couldn't do that with the ones that say variable size. So that's why there's just some that have a variable size and some that don't, so that you have all the options. So then we've also got some old paper. And these, a lot of these are similar to each other, but there is just a little bit of variation. Like here at the bottom, we actually have um, four with a variable size again, just so that you have that option as well. So you can have a texture that is bigger and it's slightly deckle edge and darkened, or you can go for the torn paper ones above. And these paper brushes, again, like I showed with the cloth, they're not actually, they're actually a lot more see-through than you would think um, because of the way that Procreate is built. However, um, I will just show you with the craft paper. Okay, so we've got this piece of craft paper that is actually, if you turn off the background, it is very see-through. You can still see the background through this. And I'll make another layer and then add, an, let's just add a different one. Let's go with handmade paper number one in a pinkish color. Okay, that one is also see-through. So you see how they look so different when there's on a white background and when they're on a no background. So what we're going to do, I have created a brush that is included called Texture Solidifier. And I've written on here, use with white. 
And what to do with this is that you can actually make this look more solid. And I'll show you first without the little trick just to illustrate why it's needed. So I'm on the pink one and using this, it makes the texture solid. However, we have the problem that it is actually going beyond the bounds of the paper and that doesn't look good at all. So what we can do is go to this layer, tap it, and then select. So that means that this paper is selected. Then making sure that we have white selected here in our colors, we go back to the brushes, go to the texture solidifier, and then use this, lift up the pen, use it again, and keep doing this a couple of times until the whole thing gets more solid, just like it was on a white background. So you can see that it doesn't look any different than it did before when it's on a white background. However, when it's on no background, it's suddenly quite solid. We can do the exact same thing here. Tap it, select, then go to the brushes, make sure we're on the texture solidifier and fill that in, lifting up a few times until the whole thing is looking solid. And you can see it gets more and more solid as I go. So if you don't want it completely solid, then you can also leave it like that or you can you can only solidify the, the middle of it if you want the, the edges to be a bit more rough looking. So you can have a little bit of control here. So now what we can do is we can actually layer these on top of each other. And it looks like paper that you've clipped in here, but actually it was a brush. So that is the little trick that you can do to make your, your textures solid. And you can use this on other texture brushes as well. They might not have um, these edges because I wanted to, I didn't want to make the standard texture brushes that just kind of fade out on the edges. I really wanted to be able to make a piece of ripped paper out of a brush. And so this texture solidifier was the answer to how to make it more solid so that you can layer it just like you would do in normal collage settings. So with that said, there are a few in here, as I've already noted, that say light on them. And that indicates that you might need to use a slightly different selection method um, because there's not a whole lot to select. So I'll just show you what I mean. I'll make a new layer and choose a pink. I'm just gonna choose um, handmade paper number one. And then I'm gonna put this up here and you can see it's barely showing up at all on top of the other paper. So if we used the same select method on this really, really light texture, you can do it, but it takes a little while to get it um, completely solid because there's not a whole lot to select. So you can see it is, it is going, but it's gonna take quite a while. So if you don't wanna do it that way with these really light ones, what you can actually do instead is go to the selection tool and then you can select the texture here and then you can kind of control how much actually is getting selected here by dragging to the right and this is under automatic by the way this won't work on freehand or any of the other ones so you can kind of control how much is getting selected here and then you can just do the same thing go to your brush texture solidifier with white selected, then you can fill it out like this. So I just wanna show you one more method to use the texture solidifier. I'm adding a new layer, and I'm going to show you with the notebook paper this time. And that's because this is a really, really light brush that comes out looking white. So it's a very light texture, very um, see-through, so which you can see up here. And when you do the automatic selection up here, it might very well just select the whole page. So it's very difficult to select that. So what you can do instead is go to the automatic selection and then select outside of it and then keep going until that is mostly the, the background is selected and not the paper. And then you can invert that. 
So now you can just do the same thing with the texture solidifier again with white selected. Just go in there and cover the whole thing with white. You won't see a difference if your background is already white. But then when you take this and layer it on top of something else, then you'll see that it is in fact solid. So those were three different methods to use the texture solidifier. But the, the main point of this is that you want to select the item in its own layer. And then on that selection, you want to use the texture solidifier in white. So I also wanted to show you the torn edge eraser and the decal edge eraser. So you'll notice that a lot of these textures have, um, here, let me just get this up here. You'll notice that a lot of these textures have a torn edge on them and then there's also the decal edge. So these are erasers that basically just add that edge if you want to change the shape. And you have to use these with the eraser tool which you can go over here to the eraser and then select one of these erasers. Make sure you're on the right layer. So let's say I want this to be torn instead of decal edge can go in here with the torn edge eraser and make it look like I've torn it. And you can control how big the tear is by how big the size of the brush is. And let's say this has a torn edge but I actually want it to have a decal edge. I can do the same thing. I'll make sure I'm on that layer and then I will use this to erase. So it has more of a decal edge. So that was the mixed media folder that comes with the mixed media collage brush set. Then we also have the ephemera element of this brush set that it comes in a separate folder. So when you've loaded your brushes, you should have both of these folders and you'll need to load them both separately. And the ephemera stamps is a collection that I have curated of public domain images which are um, free for use by anyone that are vintage images and there are birds there are lots of flowers um, we've got mushrooms and leaves and ferns butterflies maps music sheet music um, newspaper a lot of script and then at the very end we've got some text like book text, printed text, and we've got some old fashioned ads. And so the idea with these is that you can use them on top of the paper. You can use them on the background. You can use them in any way that you see fit. And it can be really fun to mix and match these into your, your pieces or do some art journaling. And let me just turn these off. Some things to note about the stamps is that they will tilt with your Apple Pencil. So there's usually a long end of every stamp. Some of them are squares like this one, but some of them have a long end. So the long end will come out parallel with your pen like this. And then the size of course changes when you change the size. And a nice fun thing that you can do with these if you've got a bit of paper like this is that you can stamp it on top of the paper which is a lot of fun um, and you can make it look like these old-fashioned scraps of paper and of course we have the problem that it's going over the edges but if you want to eliminate that you can go to your paper layer tap it and tap alpha lock and that means that you can't go outside of the edges so you can actually you know, make it look like this is like old fashioned bit of paper, scrap of parchment or something. You can also, that's a destructive way to do it. If you want to do a non-destructive way, you can make a new layer over top of it and then you can tap that and make it a clipping mask. And then you can add a stamp to that. Let me just choose a different one. So that is something fun that you can do as well. So that is really all there is to explain about these stamps. They are rather self-explanatory. You just 
tilt your pen in whatever way you want them to appear. You choose the color that you want them to appear in and then you tap the screen once, just like using a rubber stamp. And so these two sets are meant to complement each other and to, and you can get some really whimsical, fun pieces by just kind of experimenting with both brush sets together. And I will be coming out with a lot of tutorials in the coming weeks as usual with more specific projects that you can do using these brushes. So stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for watching and I hope that you enjoy the brushes. Um, please do let me know if you have any questions or comments and the easiest and quickest way to get a hold of me is always by email. You can email me at hello at elenajensen.com. I'm always happy to answer that if you have any questions or concerns. And I hope that you all have a nice holiday season if you're watching this right as it comes out. And I will talk to you again another time soon. Thanks again. Bye.